You're watching Yay TV. Coming up next. a merciful God and it's a God who is interested in blessing us. I welcome you on this series of Christian Still Worship. So far I've introduced Still Worship to you and I've shown you how to be a good steward and how Jesus Christ can prepare you. Today, by the grace of God, we want to go into areas of still worship. Areas of still worship. And I will be majoring today on still worship of your life. Still worship of life. I want to read from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke chapter 12. I want to read from verse 16 to 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then, whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. The Bible made it clear that the ownership of everything rests in God. The Bible made it clear that God created the heavens and the earth and all that are therein, including you and myself talking to you. Whether you want to believe it or not, there is the Creator, God. Whether you want to philosophize it or not, you will come back to the reality that there is a supreme mind behind this complex world. There are laws that are functioning in the universe. The earth rotates on its axis. What of the sun and everything? And they were well timed. They were not missing. The periods of the year, they were coming regularly. There must be a supreme mind an intelligent mind controlling all this and that is God the creator of everything on earth and in heaven and the Bible said this God controls everything according to his will I know somebody will say if you tell me God is in control where 
are we having all this wickedness, injustice, wars, killings, on and on like that? Let me tell you, God is not to be blamed. The problem lies with man's stewardship. Lack of the understanding of your still worship to God. As I was saying, yeah, last week, accountability to God, accountability to God and for everything is at the root of still worship. And when you look at many people today, they blame God for many things. But is God to be blamed? If you are a wicked steward, you are producing wickedness. If you are an unjust steward, you are corrupt. If you are a steward who is disobedient, how do you want orderliness to reign when you disobey? I know. God has all powers, but he is equally the God of love. He doesn't want to win the big sick. He wants everybody to repent so that they might be saved. That is why the Bible is the giver, the sustainer, and the taker of life. God says he is the giver. He is the sustainer of life. You cannot sustain yourself. You cannot give yourself life. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God made you to become a being. You did not make yourself. The breath of God gives you life. That is why you are alive today. Otherwise, you will remain a corpse, a lifeless thing. I wish you understand this. That it is because the breath of God is in you. That is why your eyes are blinking. Your hands are moving. Your legs are moving. Your kidneys are functioning, your heart is beating because there is the life of God in you, the breath of God in you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, I want to read verses 28 and 29. Acts 17, 28 and 29. For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own press have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by heart and man's device. You see that? You live in God, you move in God. When God removes his breath from you, you are an ordinary corpse. Your brain will stop functioning. Your knowledge will perish. That is why everyone shall give account of his life to God. Whoever you are, whether you are a president today, whether you are a minister today, whether you are an accountant, whether you are an engineer, whether you are aeronautic engineer, whether you are manufacturing guns, whether you are manufacturing fruits, whatever you are doing, you are going to give account unto God. Whatever you have invented, you are going to give account to God. Whatever has happened to people through your behavior, you are going to give account to God. You are accountable to Him. It is very important that you understand this. You did not live 
for yourself. No. The greatest mistake you can make in life is to see yourself as independent of God. Is to see yourself as uncontrollable by God. Is to see yourself that God has no mouth or contribution in your life. The Bible said in separating yourself from me, you can do nothing because you will become nothing. So God wants you to understand it is a fatal mistake for you to think that your life belongs to you, that you can use your life anyhow, that nobody can control you, that nobody can tell you how to use your life. Yes, God must tell you how to use your life because you did not create yourself and God created you for a purpose. A car manufacturer manufactured it for a purpose. You can't use a car to do the work of an aeroplane. It's not possible because it was not manufactured for that. It was not purpose for that. God has a purpose for creating you. And that purpose was to enjoy relationship with you and for you to worship him. The story that I read to you, that rich man, he failed to recognize God as the source of his blessing. He thought it was his business ecumenism that made him to be rich. He saw everything as belonging to himself that he did not receive it from anybody, that he acquired it by dint of hard work and expertise. That is not true. The Bible said everything comes from God. Whether your intellect or your ability and agility, they all come from God. This man committed certain errors. And I want to go over them quickly so that you can see the folly in thinking you can exist without God. Number one, the Bible said, the grant of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. His grant brought forth. Other people have grants, but the other one did not bring forth. This man did not ask himself, why did my own grant bring forth and the grant of others did not? He thought it was his ability. No, no. God said, I will have mercy on those whom I will have mercy. If you achieve anything today, if anything is going fine for you, you give the credit to God. Number two, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Look at that. He personalized everything. My fruit, my land, my this, my that. And that is the mistake many people are making today. Oh, my business. Oh, my this, my that. Are they really yours? Look at your dollar bill. You see? Can you say that is my dollar? No, you cannot. Because there can be a law that can devalue that dollar. The government can do it. Two, if I'm robber comes to you, can you tell them that is my money, don't take it? If you say that's your money, then, then they ask you your money or your life. What do you do? You have not gone to defend yourself. You ask them to go with it. You can't tell them it is your own. This man made the mistake. 
he thought the money was for him. Number three, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Look at that, my, 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 my. The Bible say, those of you say today, tomorrow we shall travel, we shall trade, we shall do this, we shall do that. He said, instead of you to say, if the Lord wills, we shall leave and do this and do that. He didn't know that he will not leave to implement all his program. I know you must have made a budget for your life a budget for your salary, a budget for your home, your mortgage, and many things like that, but the implementation is not in your hand, but in the hand of God. God wants you to understand this. Don't make the mistake this man made. He said, this will I do. That is a statement of purpose. People say, Man proposes, God disposes. You cannot fulfill anything that God has not empowered you to do. Because you are only sure of yesterday and of now. You are not sure of the next minute. Another mistake of this man, he said, and I will say to my soul, soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Look at that. He lived for himself. He did not even think, how will other people benefit from my blessings? Selfishness. This man lived for four things. He lived for pleasure. He lived to eat, he lived to drink, he lived to die. Do you see that? And that is the problem with many people today, pleasure, merriment. They live to eat, to wine and to die and die. Your life is given to you and you are to give the account of how you use it to God. How you spend your life will determine your eternal destiny. How you spend your life will determine your eternal destiny. There are two destinies, heaven and hell. I know that may be offensive to some people, but that is the truth. Look around you, even in the world. You have hair, you have heavy, even in the world. I want to see some people when they are enjoying, they say, oh, I am in heavy, no, it is heavenly. And when they are in serious trouble, they say, I'm passing through hell. So the reality is there, whether you want to believe it or not, there is heaven and there is hell. That of the one you are experiencing now is temporary. But the one God is talking about is eternal. And the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. After this judgment, how you spend your life will determine your destiny. Because you are going to give the account of your still worship. What did you do when you were alive on the earth? The Bible said there are books, there are records that are kept of everything you do since the first day you were conceived. There is a record. Don't be surprised at that. The Bible said wicked people, they have gone astray right away from the womb. So. The book of your life starts the moment conception takes place. Everything will be recorded. That is why the Bible made it clear 
that you need to be very, very careful. Let us hear what Jesus Christ said on the best way to use your life as a steward. Luke chapter 12 from verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, and neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. You see that? Jesus Christ made it clear that life is what more than meat. Life is what more than food. Your life is very, very important. You are going to give account of your life to God. Whatever you have said, whatever you have thought, whatever actions you have taken, they are recorded. On the last day, you shall give account. By the grace of God, next week, I'll be talking about still worship of time. How you can use your time for God so that you will not regret eternally. But today, I am limiting myself to worship of your life. Still worship of your life. Let me tell you, there is eternity in you, but that eternity will not be released until you, the pages of your life are closed in this world. Then you go into eternity. When you go into eternity as a good still worship of the good grace of Christ, you go into eternal life. But if your sinnership are not acceptable to God, you'd go into eternal hell. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you, Lord. And I ask that you will minister to your people so that they will know that the life they are now living, they should live it in the life of the Son of God who loved them and gave himself for them. So that, Father, they will live their life to the satisfaction of God and for the love of God and man. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Tune in next week as I will speak on still worship of time. Thank you. You've been to Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the same? Are you washed in the blood?